My name is Mike. This is my van. I call it Vankenstein. It was a telecom work van. And you'll see that from inside. I kept some of the stuff that they used and had in there. Cut it down and turned it into what I needed. And this is the control center. Basically all the power, the solar, uh, an amp for the stereo, fuse panel, inverter. And I got four golf cart batteries. So six volt, I put two together for 12 volt and then the, the, the four together and so. So it's got 400 and something amp hours and 400 watts of solar. So this is basically the living room, right? Where the table, I can move it around, pull that out and sit also. So rather than build it right in, another little table here, which um, I'll use for the computer, right? And so then I got the one plug from the inverter for the power inverter. Let's turn that on right here with this. Charge controller info. This was already in here as, as well as this and this, right? I gotta get rid of stuff, but look at all those pens. Who needs all those pens? But, but whatever, it's just stuff, right? Little horn for, you know, in case somebody's outside or if there's bears or whatever. You know, I bring that with me on hikes or, and whatnot. So it's just stuff like and clothes, right? Little locker, towels, and you know, whatever's in there. Used up some of the old shelving that they had here. I made a I made a bracket and bought a regular TV mount, right? And it'll swing that way. It'll also swing the other way so you can watch it over here in the living room. So, and it latches in pretty nicely and just goes right in. And I just basically keep my hiking pack and there's some tools and stuff you don't really need much. I get the medicine cabinet and some electronics and, you know, just stuff. Stuff, a lot of it, I still have to go through and get rid of even more things, right? There's some subtle lighting, right? So this one here is like a daylight and you can see everything nicely. But then this one here is usually I got it on at night. Under counter light so I can see what I'm doing. And then I also have these here. Just little sort of ambience lighting. Outside lights that make it. I got one out here which daylights it outside like a big floodlight. And one for the back also. Just basically it was a big shelf that I had from a closet that I had in a in a rooming house I used to own a long time ago and yeah so I just varnished it up put it there bought an old bar sink I got a little foot switch and it just starts it so I just leave it on and then, you know you can just press it so that way I don't have to turn it on the pump and then you know turn it back off and all this other I can just foot switch it it's also made out of just like the old the old uh, shelving that was in here it cut down and reconfigured and bent and just to make heat shields and whatnot because things are close right like I mean you put a pan there and once you get that in there it's pretty close so I needed to have some sort of heat shield and it already had the two um, roof vents so i mean you can so you turn it on you open a window and it just brings in or you just open this other one and it just brings the air in and right back out again so it's it keeps it cool so this is where i sleep i i figure sleeping is a very important part of everything so i i didn't go with just a little piddly ass piece of foam right i i got a full-size thickness mattress you know fridge is under here so I, I basically cut apart that many drawers, took them off, and made it look like it's still together. And put the fridge inside there. And that's it. And right now, there's nothing in there because I'm on a... I'm starting to cleanse like a five-day water 
fast. It runs off 12 volt or um, 110. I've got more than enough power to power that, have both fans going. Well, even this fan and a couple other fans I have going all at the same time, the TV going, the, the stereo, you know, pumping the bass and all that too at the same time, everything running and and be cloudy for a few days too with because it does even when it's cloudy it brings in solar food storage yeah also all right got some you know this that and the other thing a couple fruits um this one had to be cut out because of the wheel well the heater's under here it's like a furnace propane furnace that I, I got it from uh, uh, RV junkyard out of a out of a tent trailer and just put that in the side. I wasn't gonna have a heater. That was a last minute thing because I wasn't planning on seeing winter ever again. And it's worked great. Like it, it uses minimal amount of propane and it warms it up in here pretty quick. I also keep water in these right for drinking water which usually i get from springs if i can find one along the way a natural spring i'll fill up a, a larger five gallon and then and a bunch of these and have natural spring water to drink so under here let's see so i got tools there and there's three more of these underneath there with other stuff right but this is like just a quick access quick access got to get the tools you know so there's and then yeah it's all just these little pails with stuff right do you have any sort of um portable toilet or or anything like that in here i use one of these pails and that's it not not one of these but it's actually over there and uh yeah or most of the time i'll just go into walmart or any sort of public toilets right danger do too so if i'm out of camping uh, i'll just put that out just to let people know like okay i'm on a i'm on a me time time or whatever little screen i made just to go here over the one little latch which this opens and then if i'm cooking i can just open that up a little bit and it brings in the air and i have a screen that i can put on there it looks like also i got a leak probably coming in this so the this is the water that comes from the sink for the sink and this is drinking water and the water pump is here draws the water from here up to the sink and then it drains down into this usually i just let it go out on the ground because i mean there's it's just water and also i use that for a urinal too you know you might as well go in the sink right why why bother yeah you're gonna have double usage or triple usages for a lot of things right some of the shelving that was inside i just rigged it up and built a, a platform and cage for the propane tank and to keep it up out of the way so you know if you get in an accident somebody's smashing here they're not smashing that i didn't need a house anymore it was just too much space and there was no need for me to take that space up anymore. When when all I need is this to get around. I decided that when I was 45, I would take five years off of work. And also because of talking to many older people who, you know, their knees are shot or their feet or they're this or they're tied to the doctor because they got to go for tests and all these things. And it all happens soon as they retire and I'm like well guess what I'm gonna forget about all that and retire when I'm 45 at least a small five-year retirement I didn't even know what I was gonna do and next thing you know I 
I got my motorcycle license next summer. I bought a, I went from a little tiny motorcycle to this big, huge motorcycle. And after two weeks of owning that motorcycle, I decided to go on a five month journey on the motorcycle all over the US. And it was great. But the thing was, I, I couldn't really do shopping because there's nowhere to put it. You know, I, you're camping in a tent, so the rain and the, well, everything you need to survive sort of is on there, you know, all, all, all your things. And just to leave that on the side of the road and go walking downtown, you know, Los Angeles, with, which I did, um, is scary, right? It's like all my stuff is just strapped to bags on the, on the side of the motorcycle. And then the next year I went to the Appalachian Trail and I hiked on it. Um, I was going to do the whole thing, which I was the plan in the beginning. That was an awesome journey also, but at the top of a mountain, way out in the middle of Maine, um, sitting there and the birds are flying, like taking the airstream right up. And I'm by myself and I just think, I got to go home. I got to go back and I got to sell everything because I had a construction business and I was still spending a lot of money on rent per month I decided that on that mountain that I was gonna sell everything and buy a van yeah I got it down to a manageable size you know to to where I was like yeah I'm happy with that rent for the for the one trailer and continued on and started on a journey for three years in in that van in the old van which was a, a 1990 leisure travel um, b-class rv and traveled around with that and a motorcycle on the back for three years throughout that time i was like i gotta take another five years off or maybe three you know at least at least three and get another more permanent van and uh one that i can actually stand up fully in and i i went through two other options before getting this one but the only way that i think i can find out what's next in my life is is through this sort of releasing away the old and making room for the new whatever's coming you know the benefits of van life would be when the neighbors are noisy and you don't like them you can just get in there and turn the key and move down the road a bit. I lived in a house for all kinds of years and it served me well and it it served its purpose. And once that purpose was finished, I was able to let it go rather than holding on. Oh, I need to stay here because I'm used to this. I'm comfortable here. I'm, you know, and I think that's what keeps most people in the safety of the house and the neighborhood and the community and all that yeah that's a big benefit and the the financial is unbelievable really because i don't need as much anymore i don't need to work as much to pay as much so that's also you know one thing of letting go letting that go i could have continued on with work and you know, for my employees, well, they need to pay their rent and they, need, so I need to get them work and make sure that they can live and survive, which gave me a purpose for a while, but now I don't have that, right? And it's, it was good. It served its purpose for the kids to raise them up, you know, and then once they're gone, why, why do I need to keep on going in that habit? of house living you know it's time to change if everything is changing i might as well change along with it van life challenges i guess sometimes is parking some towns and townships are more friendly than others the challenge of society and their views and me how much do i want to challenge them and how much do I just want to conform to let it, you know, to let it go and not get into different big conversations with people, right? Really the rain and stuff and being inside the van, uh, it's, it's a good size for me. 
so uh, in the rain and I, I let audiobooks and all that so it's it's kind of a challenge but for myself once you get into it it's not a challenge anymore you just work through this so really there's no challenges really it's all just um once it comes up you just deal with it advice for someone getting into van life or starting new in van life would be just do it just do it and forget about it you know this sort of just get a darn van and throw a mattress in the back and start driving really it doesn't really you don't need to build this and build that and make sure you got all these solar stuff um, just do it it will work itself out that's one thing that I learned from the trail walking on the Appalachian Trail was um, because I didn't do any, I, I didn't go to the gym and work out and get myself, oh, I got to get myself pumped up for this thing because this is going to be 20 miles a day with a backpack, 40 pounds and up and down mountains every day. I got to, you know, get prepared for this, right? No, the trail prepared me for what it needed me to be. You know, I, I went through a lot of pain in the beginning, but it made me what I needed to be in order to continue on. And so you gotta, if you're in a van, you just get the van and start driving and it will form itself around what it is you need it to be. And, and don't spend too much money on it because you just might not like it. See if you like it and then worry about spending more money after you find out you do like it. If it serves you, and your better bettering of yourself and others then continue on with it and if it doesn't serve you any longer even though it did before let it go it's gonna be all right it's not easy definitely not easy to let things go that you work so hard for and then to let them go and and be at the beginning again at the beginning of what's next um yeah it, it's but it, it is so freeing it, it's the the main thing i guess philosophy is to let it go when it no longer serves me or serves others and sometimes it, even if it serves others let it go if it no longer serves myself yeah, because really, I'm the only one that's always here. And so I need to be um, happy first and not being, you know, also looking out for people, but looking out for me first because if I don't do that, I'm not going to be able to look out for people either and help anyone else out. So, yeah, that's my philosophy. Look after myself, let go of the past and the things that are no longer needed and open up for the new things. It's serving me now, this van, um, but at the same time, I'm not attached to it, you know, because it's just a van. It is my home, but it really isn't my home. My home is within and you know it around me everywhere I go I'm at home um, this is just my shell to keep me out of the rain and to you know to to hold my things it's like my big backpack really and my tent all in one you know it's like yeah so once I finish going to cities then I might move on to a larger vehicle but I can't see me going back to uh, Sticks and Bricks house or apartment until I get really old and I can't no longer move around or, you know, I'm no longer able to do it, right? Which probably will never happen. Uh, you know, just as long as I keep active and doing, you know, 
can live forever pretty much until you just fall down on the trail somewhere and that's it you're done you know you're gonna carry you out on a gurney and you're done now, now. so so i'll be in van life now probably forever my instagram is and youtube um is gone to be wild and that's uh gone number two letter b wild hey everybody i'm forrest the filmmaker the person behind the video that you just watched if you enjoyed that and want to check out more alternative dwellings we have a playlist popping up that is all the episodes that we've ever done there's van tours tiny home tours sailboats off-grid uh garden tours all sorts of cool stuff so check that out thanks for watching hit subscribe we'll see you on the next episode